Hey everyone. Being a bit of a rail fan before I actually became a railroader, I'd always been curious about the signals used on the railroads to control trains. Now, I actually learned how to read them before I became a railway conductor, and I know a lot of rail fans have always been curious as well, and of course, model railroaders uh, wanting to put in functioning systems onto our functioning signals onto their layout. So I thought I'd put together this crash course on reading railway signals. Now, the signals I'm going to show are Canadian railway signals. A lot of railways in the U.S. use these same signals or similar or the same concept of signals, but with different methods of display. Now, we use colored lights here in Canada, but the Raton subdivision in New Mexico still has semaphores. The Pennsylvania Railroad and Baltimore and Ohio Railroad use a cross between colored signals and semaphores. The lights are colored and show the semaphore position of horizontal, 45 degrees, or vertical. The most common signals are the searchlight signals. Now these are a single light which gets focused through two lenses and then the light passes through a colored glass to make it either red, yellow, or green. You can see the three colored glasses in this picture of the internal workings of a searchlight railroad signal. The holder gets pushed to the right or to the left by an electromagnet to put the yellow or green glass in front of the light. Notice that the middle glass is red. Now, this is a fail-safe. If the electromagnet fails, then the light reverts to red. Now, more and more we are seeing the LED signals, nicknamed Darth Vader signals because of the large sun hood. Uh, the principles are the same as what I'm going to show you here, only previously a single light could display three different colors through the use of different colored glass that would be moved in front of the light. The LED signals just have three different colored LED lights under the sun shield, but you just simply read the signal as this bank of lights represents one signal. It's either red, yellow, or green. The signals use the colors that you've grown accustomed to with traffic signals, red, green, and yellow. Now, there are some signals coming out that are uh, lunar, which is uh, a bluish-white color, mostly seen in the U.S., but is being seen in Canada. Now, trains are slow to accelerate and slow to stop. I'd been in one emergency stop situation where our train was only seven cars long and two locomotives, and only going 25 miles an hour. It was incredible how much space it took to stop that train with the brakes in full emergency. Uh, probably took about a thousand feet to stop. Some heavy freight trains can book along at 75 miles an hour. Uh, it can take them over a mile or two kilometers to come to a stop in full emergency brake. Now the reason for this is the same reason trains are the second most efficient means of transportation. The contact area of the steel wheels on steel rails is about the size of a dime. So literally, an entire train's contact with the rails can be the equivalent surface area of a coffee table. Now that means very little friction, very easy and efficient moving of incredible amounts of weight, but the downside of very little friction and surface area is stopping that train. So we need to know what we need to do with the train miles in advance so we can take appropriate action to control the train. It can take two miles or more to bring a freight train to a gentle, controlled stop, what we call a service stop. So we need to know well in advance what's happening up ahead. So there are basically two control, train control systems in Canada. OCS, which is the Occupational Control System, or CTC, which is the Centralized Traffic Control System. Now up here in northern Alberta, where I work, it's all OCS, which means that just like air traffic control of aircraft, we get clearance from rail traffic control to be on the rails. They give us the rails and assure that no one else is on our track and we are controlled by rail traffic control via the radio. Rail traffic control is known as RTC. CTC is the most efficient type of rail traffic control and that's where the signals come in. It's controlled by RTC, but RTC gives instructions to the trains via these signals. Now, the distance between the signals varies. On the CP line behind my house in Ontario, they had signals every two miles, for instance. 
but in heavier traffic corridors, the signals can be closer together. The base CTC signal is three lights on a mast. This signal, green over red over red, believe it or not, is a clear signal. It means go full bore. Whatever your speed limit is, you are permitted to go full speed ahead. The track ahead of you is clear. Now you might wonder, why on earth do they have the red lights then? Well, there are actually multiple reasons for this. First of all, understand that it is the combination of lights that communicate what to do. The combination of three lights, each of which could either be red, yellow, or green. Uh, secondly, these are mechanical devices. The light bulbs can blow out. The mechanics inside that change the color of the light can break. Uh, using three lights, we get an indication of what we need to do as much as three signals in advance. So at two mile spacings, we could know six miles in advance if we have to slow down or stop. But if the two lower lights aren't lit up, then we'd have to guess what the signal combination is. Now we can't do that. Our lives and the lives of others are on the line here. There's no guessing allowed. So consider the two red lights as placeholders. They're lit, so we know that they are functioning, but they are showing red, which effectively means we can ignore them as they are below the green signal. The three signal heads each represent three different speeds. The top light is for high speed, basically whatever the maximum speed for that track is. The second head is medium speed. The bottom head is for slow speed. Medium speed is an actual speed. It is designated as 30 miles an hour. Slow speed is also an actual speed, 15 miles per hour. So if this signal means track speed, then what does this signal mean? You might have guessed. It means medium speed. So you should not be going any faster than 30 miles an hour when you pass this signal. This signal would mean, you guessed it, slow speed or 15 miles per hour. You should not be going any faster than 15 miles per hour when you pass this signal. If all three are red, you could probably guess what that means. Yep, it means stop. Now, this is slightly simplified for instructional purposes, but there you have it. Your first four signals and the basics of the CTC signal signal system. But remember, we're a train and we need to know miles in advance of what's ahead of us. We need to know how long in advance what we're going to do and what we're going to need to do. So we're trucking along at track speed and we come to this signal. Remembering that the uppermost non-red light is the one we always want to pay attention to and we ignore the other red lights as placeholders. Basically this signal means we're okay to pass this signal at track speed but it's yellow warning us that the next signal is going to be a stop signal. This signal is called clear to stop because we are clear to proceed past this signal at track speed, but we need to prepare to stop at the next signal. We were just given two miles warning of what the next signal is displaying and simultaneously told what to do at this signal. Now knowing what you know now, you might just be able to figure out this signal. You guessed it, medium to stop. So if you're driving the train, you must pass this signal going no faster than medium speed or 30 miles per hour and expecting the next signal to be a stop signal. So you'll be preparing to stop. Now there is one small catch to this next signal. The slow speed light is flashing yellow. There's a reason for that which we'll get into in a minute, but let me just tell you that the slow speed head of the flashing yellow means slow and because it's yellow, that means the next signal will be a stop signal. So this signal is slow to stop. You can pass this signal going no more than 15 miles an hour, preparing to stop at the next signal. Now while we're on this signal, I'm going to explain one of the weird signals. Let's say the yellow light was solid yellow, not flashing. This is very similar to the slow signal, but with a further restriction. This signal is called restricting signal for restricted speed. You cannot go faster than slow speed, 15 miles an hour, but the further restriction is that you must be on the lookout for a switch lined against you, broken rails, or able to stop within half the distance of vision. Here's why. If I can only see a thousand feet ahead of me because of a curve with trees on the embankment, for instance, 
I have to drive the train at a slow enough speed so that when I see something on the tracks, I can stop in 500 feet, half of the distance that I could see. Why is this? It's because that something on the tracks may be another train moving in the other direction. So if he is also driving at a speed in which he can stop in half the distance he can see, we both stop in half the distance of sight, meaning we meet in the middle and don't collide. Now again, remember, the system is built up on a mechanical system. Mechanical systems can fail. So let's take a look at our slow to stop signal. It's a flashing yellow signal on the slow speed head. There's a little relay inside the control box that flashes that light. And let's say the relay burns out and the light no longer flashes, it is now a solid yellow. What just happened? It's a fail-safe system. We had a less restricting signal, we were just limited to a maximum of 15 miles an hour. But now, because it's a solid yellow, it's now a restricting signal, which is more restrictive than a slow signal. We have to slow down to whatever speed the terrain demands, we need to be extra cautious and be able to stop within half the distance of vision. So those are two reasons why the flashing yellow light means slow speed. You'll notice this very carefully thought out trend as we start to get into the flashing lights on the signals. If the flashing fails, the signal simply reverts to a more restrictive signal. A flashing yellow light on the top now tells us what's going on two signals ahead of us. It's yellow and on the top head, meaning we can blow by the signal at full speed ahead. But it's yellow, warning us that up ahead is a stop signal. It's flashing, telling us that the stop signal is two signals ahead. So this signal will be a flashing yellow, meaning advance clear to stop. We have now been given advance warning that in four miles we're going to have to stop. The next signal will be a solid yellow on the high speed head, meaning clear to stop. We can blow by that signal at track speed if we want, preparing to stop at the next signal. Now let's say the flashing relay melts down in the control box again and our light now stays a solid yellow. What has happened? It's a fail safe system. It's the wrong signal because we would read it as clear to stop. We would pass this light thinking we had to stop in two miles not four miles. We would get to the next signal, expecting it to be a stop signal, but it would turn out to be a clear to stop signal as well. No biggie. We carry on at track speed to the next signal, prepared to stop. So now that we've seen how the signals can indicate both what to do now and what to expect to the next signal, let's go back to our first three signals again. This one is a clear signal, proceed at track speed. This one, as we discussed, is a medium signal, but it is green, indicating that the next signal is a clear signal. We must slow down and pass our entire train, past the signal, going no faster than medium speed. Then, we can pick up speed and go right at track speed. The reason for the medium speed will no doubt be because at that signal, the train will pass through a switch. Now you can't just go blazing through these switches at high speed. You'll take the train right off the rails because it can't take the corner at high speed. But this switch is designed to be transited at 30 miles per hour or less. So you pass this signal at medium speed, indicated by the medium speed head. The light is green, which tells us that the next signal we encounter will be a clear signal. It's the same thing if we encounter a green light on the slow speed head. The switch will have an even harsher curve to it, designed for a train going 15 miles per hour or slower. However, the light is green, telling us that the next signal will be a clear signal. So once our entire train has gone through the switch, we can now accelerate to track speed, knowing that the next signal is a clear signal. This three-head signal system is the foundation for all of the other signals I'm going to show you in this series of videos. Just keep this three-head system in mind as you learn the other indications. High speed on the top, medium speed in the middle, slow speed on the bottom. In the next video, we'll discuss two-headed and single-headed signals, the reasoning behind them, and how to read them.